So who has read Debian's social contract? Yes? Okay, so what is um, the point number four in the social contract? Our users. Yes, our users. What about our users? Yes, that our users and free software. Those are our priorities in Debian. This is from the Debian social contract. Um, how does this compare to the priorities of corporate app developers and social media services? What are their priorities? Um, profit and Yes, um, as shareholders, yes. So the directors of corporations are obliged to do what's best for their company and for their shareholders, not their employees, not their users, not what's good for society, but their obligation is to their corporation and their, their shareholders. Um, So what happened to MySpace and all the other social media networks? Facebook just came along and clobbered them all, didn't they? Um, so this chart shows the uh, market share of, um, or actually the minutes that people spend on social media networks as Facebook took over. Um, so if you were running another social media network or developing another app, um, and you were one of the directors of those companies, you'd be very concerned about your company being uh, wiped out, just like MySpace or other um, operators who just lost all of their users to Facebook. Um, so would that leave you tempted to do things to keep the attention of your users, to interrupt them with push messages, um, even to the point that you're almost spamming them? Um, so this is the way it's been working in the in the domain of corporate solutions for free for real time communications. So WhatsApp, Viber, um, you know Twitter, Facebook, they're all competing for those for every minute you have in the day. They're competing for your attention, for user engagement. Um, and they're interrupting you to get it. Um, can they get that share of people's attention without interrupting you? Now, people have a soft spot for things that are new or unusual. Um, has anyone seen a cat photo recently? <laughs> yeah, just about every cat photo is different. Cat photos get your attention, don't they? They say that Facebook would be dead within a week if it wasn't for cats. Um, half the people come to Facebook just to see a new cat photo each day. Um, no two cat photos are the same. People are attracted to things that are new, that are changing, that are interesting. Um, you know, they're doing something like studying for an exam, and it's boring. And then this cat photo pops up, and it just brightens up their whole face. Um, but it may not be. Um, helping them study or whatever they were doing at that time before they received the new cat photo. Um, people have a vulnerability for things that are new or unusual. Um, that our brains are wired to be um, excited by those things. Um, this is actually similar to the vulnerability we have for fatty foods. Back in the caveman days, when we were hunter-gatherers, um, 
it was very hard to get a lot of fat in your diet. People would struggle to get the minimum amount of fat in their diet. Now you can get more fat in one meal from McDonald's than a caveman could get in a whole week. And so the human body is hardwired to try and find fat because it used to be difficult to find. Um, and it's the same thing with um, the interruptions we get from, from our social media, um, messaging apps and, and what have you, that, the, that our brains react to this excitement um, that something is happening. Um, companies like McDonald's, which are huge, or even your local fish and chip shop um, business, you know, they all know that they're selling a product that is not healthy, um, that they're appealing to this um, excitement that you have for eating fatty foods. But they've worked out it's profitable and they continue to do it. And in the same way, many of the developers of communications apps have worked out that it's profitable to keep interrupting people. Just like putting chips on their plate, um, they just keep doing it because they've worked out they'll end up like MySpace if they don't you know, get, keep people's attention. Um, now, if you're driving your car or you're reading a book and you hear that you've just got a text message or a, a WhatsApp message or what have you, um, do you find that affects your concentration? Can you even finish reading that paragraph in the book without some difficulty? You want to know what was in the text message, don't you? Um, so they've actually suggested that knowing you have a message that you haven't read has the same impact on your concentration as a glass of wine. Or another way it's been explained is that having that message that you haven't read sitting there, and you know it's there, you heard the beep, but you haven't looked, that it's, it's the same as a 10 point drop in your IQ, doing certain, uh, under certain conditions. Um, So back to the social contract, is it in the best interests of our users to interrupt them, to put notifications on their screen, whether it's on their laptop or their desktop or on their mobile phone, you know, in a corner of their web browser? As an organisation, Debian is not run like a corporation. We don't have a board of directors. We're not regulated like a company. Um, so we don't have to chase profits or look out for shareholders. Um, we don't have to worry about maximizing the number of minutes that our users spend using Debian each day. Has anyone ever tried to count that? No? OK. Um, not only that, we can design our tools to put users in control of their communications. Instead of the communications controlling the user, the user can control their communications. You see this in, with all successful people, um, whether it's a politician or a rock singer or a sports star. You know, they have two or three people to filter all their communications. Um, so they don't have to answer questions themselves. Someone else runs their Twitter account for them while they're busy playing golf or going to the beach. Um, another thing that we can do is we can change the default settings in the applications we distribute to turn off the notifications. If, as a community, we, we value the ability of people to concentrate um, and to control their time, um, we don't have to interrupt them. We can say, look, we'll turn off the notifications and the people who want them can turn them on if they need them. 
Um, most other software vendors wouldn't dare to try something like that. But we can do that because we're Debian. Because it's free software and we can change it um, and we can design it with the user in mind. Um, just think about a, a couple of potential users for a moment. Imagine a university student who's trying to learn a language and they're memorizing a list of words. What impact would that glass of wine have on that exercise? What impact will it have if they are getting beeps from their computer or their phone? Um, you know, for memory to work, there's a strong link between memory and, and concentration. If their concentration is elsewhere, they may as well not have even started the learning exercise. They didn't even need to open the book or pick up the list of words because after they've had that notification, they're not going to remember anything anyway. Um, imagine a software developer who's been analysing a complicated bug, like a race condition or something, um, and their phone beeps, and they lose their concentration, and they were just on the verge of solving that bug, and their concentration has gone out the window, and they will miss some small detail in the log file that would have helped them solve the problem, and now they're going to spend the next afternoon working on it. Um, so they've, they've lost their time, um, and they have to start again. These are real examples of the impact of push notifications um, and all these other pop-ups and interruptions from messaging technologies today. Um, so in, in LumiCall, which is an app that I look after for Android, um, one of our outreachy interns, um, Avika Gola, who will be arriving sometime today, um, has experimented with silent times in the app. Um, so this is just one example of something that free software can do that no phone company would dare to dream of. Um, when your phone is not answered, there's no charge for the call. That's a nightmare for phone companies. This is why they enable voicemail on every new phone, um, because they want to know that they can still charge people to call you even when you don't answer. Um, so with a silent mode feature, an automatic silent mode that automatically stops your phone ringing after a certain time every night, um, you know, from the phone company's perspective, you're cutting their revenue. They're not going to offer you that choice. Um, but free software can give you that choice. Um, so Urvika has developed that and you're welcome to try it. You're welcome to copy it into other apps because free software lets you do that. Um, people often ask me, you know, can we make an alternative to Skype and Viber and WhatsApp? Um, but we have to be careful to think about what that alternative will look like. We can't just offer another Skype or another Viber. If we try to just do the same things the way that the corporations do them, um, then our service will be indistinguishable. There'll be no reason for users to change over. Um, if you look at privacy, for example, even after the revelations by Edward Snowden, um, many people still are not motivated to change. Who has had a conversation with a friend recently about privacy? Anybody? And are they still using the same technologies or have they moved over to free software? And who's, whose friends have tried free software for a day or a week and then they've gone back to something proprietary? Yeah. Privacy has not helped people to change their mind about those technologies. Um, but when some users realise how much it's costing them to lose their attention, to lose their energy dealing with the interruptions from messaging apps and what have you, um, are we ready with a solution for those users? And when people realise that their children are not learning at school, and they go out looking for solutions, 
wouldn't that be a great place for us to be in, to have an alternative, not just a Skype with a different name, but a completely different way of doing messaging and real-time communications where the user is in control. Um, so those are some questions I wanted to raise to get some discussion going over this week. Um, who's going to be here for the rest of the week at DevConf? Yeah. So, so there's a lot of developers and a lot of people who are very keen on free software. And these are problems that we can solve um, and we can offer these things to people. Um, so these are things we can continue talking about through the week. The next thing I want to bring up now is to demo some of the things we're actually doing today in Debian, things that work for free real-time communication. Um, and these are things based entirely on free software. Um, so the first demo, we're going to use the rtc.debian.org service. So who's a Debian developer here? Yep. So who's tried rtc.debian.org already? Yep. So, so a few people. So you can log in and using a RTC password. You actually have to go to the um, LDAP service and set up an RTC password there before you can use this site. Um, do not use your secure SSO passwords or things to try and log in here. Um, okay, so I've logged in and now I can make and receive calls through my browser using my pocock at debian.org address. Um, so we have someone who's hopefully going to call. Uh, let's have a look on IRC. We'll know if it rings because we'll hear it. Um, it's one of those interruptions I've been speaking about. Okay. Does anyone remember which workspace I was on? One of the problems with WebRTC is that if you have a lot of tabs open <laughs> and a lot of windows, it can be hard to find which one is ringing. Um, so we've got Yona is calling, and she's uh, calling from this SIP address. So she's in the Fedora community. They have a similar service. So I'm going to enable that. Hello. Yona? Okay, so, so that's working. I'm going to hang up. C can you hear me? Oh, let me just try the sound. We, don't, we tried to hook this up to the speakers before. Can you check your microphone volume? Check that you are not muted. Yona? Um, now I've got the, the sound at maximum. 
and I've only got one output which is wired in here to the sound system. So. Yeah, so that's working. You can hear me, Yona? Okay, let's um, try changing something. Um, change my uh, webcam so I'm going to hang up and then you can call then I'll call you it's like the transformers it's, um, We have to choose the camera here. Hello. Can you see the room? have a if you wave to Yona <laughs> okay we have communication very good Yona is in uh, Tirana in Albania she's one of the open labs team um, they made us very welcome there at OSCAL, their annual conference back in May. Um, and Yona is going to Flock later this month. Flock, is, is anyone here going to Flock with Fedora? Yeah, so they have a similar service. It's actually based on the same code, just with their Fedora logo. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to establish more communication between different distributions using WebRTC. So we'll try the Jitsi Meet now. Um, so Jitsi Meet is another solution. You can have more than two people in a call. So I'm going to hang up again. And if we're lucky, we might even get um, audio with Jitsi Meet. So Yona, we're going to Jitsi Meet. Um, so I have to go and find the URL. So what was that? It's a notification. <laughs> Who was who that? You've, you've proven my point. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so now we're in Jitsi Meet. Hello. So what we could do is somebody else could try and join this session as well using the URL. Can you hear me, Yona? It's this URL. Can you read that at the back? No? Um, I'll put the URL 
on the IRC. Oh, here we go. So, so it's working for somebody. Yep. Okay. So who else is joining us? Um, I don't know what's happening here with the sound. Um, I could try... We got feedback. Hello. You can hear me. Okay. I'm going to try unplugging the amplifier and see if we can hear people through my laptop speakers, which will probably not be loud enough to fill the room. Um, Yona? Yona? Can you say something? Can you hear me? Hello? Okay. Um, can you hear me? No, I, I don't think we're hearing anyone else coming back through the speakers here, so I don't know exactly where the sound has gone. I can check that, yeah. So there's also a bit of um, feedback with latency. Yeah, there are far too many options in the Pulse Audio. Um, so when you go into the Jitsi Meet, you can put your name in there somewhere. Um, actually, there are some Yeah, let me stop that. So fellow Jitster, um, you can add your name and we've got... When you go into the Jitsi meet... Okay, that wasn't me, that was feedback again. Um, so I'll turn that down. Um, Okay, so there are exciting possibilities with Jitsi Meet. There's whatever's going wrong because it, it didn't work from either of those pages. So there's probably something I've done in my sound settings in my laptop that has stopped it working, which is not unusual because I'm often tweaking these things. Um, I tested it earlier today and it was okay, but maybe I've changed something when I was connecting up to the projector. Um, so I'd, 
like to encourage people to try both of these things. If you're a Debian developer, you know, please register with the um, rtc.debian.org and try calling other people in the community or ask people to call you. Um, and anyone can go to Jitsi Meet, um, so try that out, and and you know share the um, results using the Debian RTC mailing list. Um, you know, if you have questions, there are people there who can answer them. Um, the next thing we're going to move on to now is Ring. Um, so who has already heard of Ring? So many people. So Ring is is peer to peer. Um, so there's no central server like with WebRTC. So I'm going to invite Alex and Dorina from Savoir Faire Linux. They're part of the team behind Ring. Um, yep. Sebastian, yep. You can come up as well. So come and join us. Um, Okay, so you will need a microphone. So, and if you want, yeah. so Ring is completely new. Um, it's a peer-to-peer -peer solution. So Alex what? is going to yeah. explain try? more about what it does and why this is different. Um, if you've got F-Droid, you can try and download, or Google Play as well, you can download it on your phone while, while it's been explained. So. Hi. Yeah. Um, so I'm Alexandre. I'm from the Ring team, and I'm a Debian developer. I happen to be maintaining Ring in Debian, actually. Uh, we have recent version of Rings in, um, in Debian backports, uh, but a bit older in Debian stable and very recent and unstable. Uh, so, so what Ring is, it's, it's a fully uh, distributed communications platform. So um, I'm not saying uh, centralized, I'm not saying uh, federated, I'm saying distributed. So uh, just, just like, uh, just like um, BitTorrent magnet links works, they, 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 work, they work using DHT, uh, we do the same thing with Ring. So when you use Ring, you're not trusting any entity to relay messages, you're really like using a fully distributed service. So it comes with it comes with some downsides, uh, such as like messages can take up to one or two seconds to get to the uh, to the other participant, and things like that. But mostly we have, uh, if we don't have it already, we have solutions for most like uh, RTC problems. As you can see on my client right now, I, I can see that Avio is online, so we have presence, which is uh, very special for a distributed uh, service, and we also have usernames. The, the, this this guy here, he is called Avio, and um, this is a registered username in a in a distributed service. So this is uh, this is problems problems we have solved with Ring Two. We are uh, making use of uh, blockchain technology, just like Bitcoin, to register usernames. Um, and uh, I'm going to make a call to uh, to show you what it looks like. This is what we call a Ring ID. Ring ID are not really um, not really uh, convenient to uh, to share with people, but I don't know the username of this of this user. Oh, ah, I'm gonna call someone else then.
Ring also has uh, some useful, useful features such as delivery reports. So uh, when you when you send messages, even though, though it, it goes through a uh, a fully distributed server, um, it's um, you, you have delivery reports, so you can know whether or not your your contact has has received a message. You don't see my full screen. I'm going to resize the window here. Ah. All right. So we're calling between your phone. Yeah, I'm calling to my, my cell phone with my laptop. Yeah. So I can. Uh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give it to Dugina. Did anyone else download it onto Android? Uh, yeah, so we have apps for, uh, for most platforms, uh, including Android and some non free platforms. We have, um, we have clients for everything. Ring, Ring is still, is, we, we, still, we still consider Ring a very early software, so you can, you can expect bugs, but um, that, that's what the software does. Oh, yeah. Uh, we also have useful features such as multi-device. Uh, so when you, call a, when you call a Ring user, uh, it's going to ring of, of, on all of its devices, and adding a new, a new device is as simple of, as uh, entering a PIN and your password. Uh, we, we still we still struggle with uh, with ma with many concepts that we have to fight that people are used to. Uh, for example, when you create a Ring account, sometimes we have users coming back to us and asking um, how come I can't log in on on my on my new device just with my login password. Well, no, that's not how it works. You have to transfer actually your your certificate to the new device. So. Concepts like this don't apply to Ring because it's fully distributed. You can't just log in on a new laptop and expect it to work. You really have to transfer files from one computer to another. But uh, we, we, we try to make it as easy as possible to, uh, to simplify those concepts. And feedback from the community will also help, uh, especially from, from users that do not understand the concepts behind distributed services. Yeah, and we do have a talk about about Ring uh, in a few hours. So if you're interested in more, more details as to how it works, please come. Yeah. So 6 p.m. Yeah. Which day? That, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Today. So it would be uh, uh, it will be at 6 p.m. in the Woody Room. So you're all invited if you're interested on on Ring. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So we've got about maybe five minutes for questions. Um, so does anyone have questions? And you need the microphone. Um, do you want to oh, take yeah. the microphone out to people? Careful. Um, so who has a question? Uh, can I up get install ring? Yeah. Um, um, the package is called ring. Yeah. Okay. I, I suggest you use the one in backports. So uh, please enable backports on your machine. But if you're, if you're running on stable or whatever, yeah, you're going to have a recent yeah, version. Yeah, okay. yeah, thank you. We also have repositories for all distros for those of you guys that are not using Debian for some reason. Okay, so next question. Okay. So you. S yeah, okay. So you said it's peer to peer, but do I understand it correctly that there is a server in the middle? No, there's absolutely no server. Well, the, the way the way peer to peer networks work usually is you have to know at least one node to join the network. So uh, we run what we call a, a, a bootstrap node at bootstrap.ring.cx. But like if if you did not want your client to connect to this node at, when, when it first boots, you could put your friend's IP and it's going to work. It's it's fully distributed. Uh, there, there's one thing though is when when calls do not work. So for example, there are situations where both people are um, both both peers are behind a firewall that they do not control. Um, it's impossible to establish a, a connection between the two users, right? Because they they don't they don't have a UPnP and they are both behind a firewall. Uh, Ring will uh, will revert to using turn servers. Uh, but this is like a last, a last resort thing, and we host turn servers for the community to use. So when you install Ring, it's pre-configured with a server that it, host, that it that is hosted by Savoir Faire Linux. So uh, you are almost assured that, that every call will work at all times. Yeah. So, so are maybe those turn servers in Debian too. If what? 
of the turn servers in Debian 2? The, the turn server is, uh, is not a ring thing. Like it's, it's, it's yeah, a fully we, open protocol. Uh. We have three turn server packages in Debian. So people can run their own turn server if they don't want to use the turn server provided by the ring developers. So Ring does not invent many things. Like we use SIP, we use uh, turn servers, all of those protocols we haven't invented. Yeah. We have another question. Do you have any plans for making uh, an iPhone version? An iPhone app? Did you say that? Yes, uh, yes we do have a work in progress iPhone app. It's it's the only it's it's almost the only platform that we haven't released on yet. Uh, it's working, so you can you can build from source if that's what you want. But uh, it's it's not in the store, and there are issues with that too. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, very good. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for coming, and thank you. Alex and the thanks to you for inviting us. Ring team for demonstrating that. Um, and thank you to Yona for joining us remotely. I'm sorry we could not hear you. Um, I'm sure this was my fault and not yours. Um, and so please do you know, feel free to approach us and test things with us while we're here. Because um, even for problems like this th with the WebRTC, there's no better place to test these things and iron out the bugs than when you're standing up in front of a room of people. Um, but the second best place to test the things and iron out the bugs is when you're meeting people here at an event like DebConf. Um, so if you're trying these things and they're not working for you, you know, sit down with me and we can have a look at it together. Even if I can get some more data to file a bug report and we can fix it in the future, that's one of the things that makes an event like this really productive. So I'd welcome any questions or problems people have. Um, so yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah.